everyone. It's Kathy Alessandra, your Yes, I Can coach. And I am back with another episode of Yes, I Can Living. And I'm super excited, more than usual, actually. I'm always excited to be interviewing amazing women. But this particular show is, well, this goes back to my childhood. So um, today we have Kathleen Guthrie Woods, who is a San Francisco based writer and editor. She is the author of The Mother of All Dilemmas. Dreams of Motherhood and the Internship that Changed Everything. It's a memoir with a message, and it is a message indeed. It's now available in paperback and ebook. Um, she also runs the blog 52 Nudges, which I just <laughs> fell in love with, um, in which she takes weekly risks. You know, I'm all about the risk with Yes, I Can, ladies, um, to push her out of her sometimes too comfortable nest. Um, she'll give us some information about how to connect with us at the end of the show, but Kathleen and I go back to uh -huh. five years old, six years yep. old, something like that, right? We yep. grew up together. Our parents were the best of friends. Um, we were in Girl Scouts together. I mean, so seriously, when I saw this post on social media, this book that came out, I'm like, man, we had got to reconnect. So Kathleen, welcome to the show. So excited to have you here today. Thank you. This is so fun on so many different levels. So I really appreciate this. It's just fun to be talking to you about this and connecting. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we connected on a couple levels. This book, the book who's, that's just come out is amazing. And so this Thank interview, you. everybody, is going to be a little bit different than what I typically do. You know, Kathleen is an entrepreneur. She's got her own business. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But this book, you know, as an author and, and coming out and what this book stands for, um, you know, and the title. Uh, you know, the mother of all dilemmas, dreams of motherhood, and the internship <laughs> changed everything. I love that. So, you know, tell us just, you know, in a microcosm here, okay. a little, little bit, you know, kind of the gist of this memoir. Well, I, uh, what it refers to is, as I got close to turning 40, perpetually single, and I started to realize that I had built my whole life around this expectation that I was going to be a mother of quite a number of children. That was my big plan. And suddenly you hit this point. It's like, huh, how am I going to do this? And am I going to do this by myself? Because that's really what it came down to. It's like, I was not willing to get into a relationship just to have children. I just couldn't do that to myself. So I started exploring, how can I have a child on my own? And the deeper, can I really do this? And I went on this, this journey of, of financially, emotionally, physically, all these concerns of things that I really needed answers to before I just dove in head first and got myself in a really could have been a very challenging situation. And I started joking with my friends, wouldn't it be great if I could get an internship and try this out and see if I can actually do this? Like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do an internship as a single working mom, great. Out of the blue, I get a call from my sister, who you know, they're getting ready to go on a big vacation. They said, what would you think of long-term, couple of weeks babysitting the 18-month-old nephew? Oh my God. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, I think I just got a message from God. And so I did this thing. I jumped in, I went all in, and I took, being a writer and a research, I took copious notes of everything I was experiencing, assuming that I would come home with all my questions answered. And nothing works out that easily, right? And in the process, what really came is I, is I thought that would be the end of my book. I thought I'd have this miracle baby, right? Because that's all the happy endings of all the movies that we see and whatever. And as I started really working through this and someone prompted me and said, I think you have something to say. The question is, why is it that you have spent your whole life thinking that your only value in this world is if you become a mother? And what if that's not true? What if you meant to do something else? And holy cow, Kath, you know, and that's where, this is why it's perfect. We're talking. I started really looking at what were the influences, the messages that came up from my childhood? What ingrained this belief in me mm -hmm. of this is all that I'm meant for? And then the bigger question is, okay, if I decide it's not, what, how do you begin creating a, a whole new life plan for yourself? Where do you, you, where do you start? And that really is, is that was the dilemma. And then ultimately, I'm not going to spoil this for anybody, but I did not have children. I got married late in life to an incredible man who was worth the wait hundred percent. We do not have children. 
and we've had this extraordinary life, but I still have to make peace with this huge loss, this, this hole still, Mm -hmm. even though I feel like I'm on the other side of it, I've done my grieving process. I've worked through it. There's still that, you know, the, the ripple of, of losses of, I'm not going to have grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to host a family Christmas, all those things that were so important growing up. And, and the bigger picture is that, you know what, all of us experience these big losses in life somewhere along the way, there's going to be some big dream that's going to blow up. Yeah. And what you choose to do with yourself when that happens Mm -hmm. is I think what we have in common of, okay, I'm going to pick myself up, dust myself off and figure out something new. Yes, I can. Yeah. Yes, I can. And that's, I think, you know, in, in reading the book, um, you know, and I've been through a divorce as, as you probably are aware, yeah. I think there's, you know, it's, it's a different grief process. I do have three kids, but there was definitely grief, right. And, sure. and what was expected by others. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it's coming to terms with that. And I, I could, yeah. um, this book, like you said, I mean, while it may not be children, I think many can, many can relate to it in the, in the mm-hmm. child aspect. But I think also many can relate to it in this book, just in the sense of having that big dream yeah. it not going the way you think it's going to go. Yeah. And what are you going to make of that on the other side? Right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's been one of the, you know, I wrote this book with a very specific audience in mind of really, I was writing to myself. This is, this is the information I needed to hear. And then because I became a writer within the childless, not by choice community, that was obvious. And it has been extraordinary how many mothers have gotten in touch with me and said, you know what, for just those reasons we talked about, I had things that didn't go the way I thought, and I could relate to this. And I got to get some healing from what you shared that. Oh, hello. That's what we want our work to do. Impact in the world. Impact. You know, in one of the first chapters, you talk about, uh, you're not so right. (laughs) Yeah. Mr. Not so right. And I love this. And I think he said something to you about the fact, well, you should have kids. Well, you should have kids. This was somebody you were dating is the way I took the book. Yeah. And um, the aha moment, the light bulb moment that that caused for you. Can you just share a little bit about that? Because I thought that was so um, really impactful. You know, we all have something that happens, um, but can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. Let me start by saying he is a really good human. And he was just not my right human. And I was not right for him. I was in a place though, where I felt the situation, the relationship was good enough. And I think that is such a, a lie that we tell ourselves. And yet I was in that place. It was, it was good enough, but I really wasn't getting what I needed. And yet I wasn't ready to embrace that until, so, so the situation is, we, I had an encounter with the child. He observed it. We'd been talking about future plans on and off we should get married we should get kids and it, there was something to me that just couldn't take the next step mm-hmm. and I couldn't put my finger on it and then we had this experience and he he this and this is from the opening of the book where he says to me you should really have kids not you know what we're going to have a great life together we're going to have a family we would make beautiful children we should have kids it was you mm-hmm. and I thought oh my god there is no future here mm-hmm. I got, I got to, I got to get my business together (laughs) and figure out the right future for me. Nobody else. Mm -hmm. I got to figure this out for me. And that really was the catalyst, the wake up call of like, well, then, then how do you do it? Where do you start? Mm -hmm. You know, who do you talk to? Who do you, and, and I do, I, one of the things I love, like you do too, is that I, am able to, I'm, I really love interviewing people and hearing their stories. And I talk to so many women of different ages of, you know, what have you learned in life? What do I need to know? Where do I start? And I did my research. I did my homework mm-hmm. really just to answer my own questions. And the fact that those questions could then answer other people's questions. That's the good news. So he is, he's, is, uh, I'm actually not sure what his relationship status is right now. Cause I can keep closely in touch. I'm sure but, you but I, no, yeah. but, but it was, it was, you know, we had an amicable party in which I'm very proud of. And he, uh, he helped me get to my best life. And I will be forever grateful to him for doing that because if he hadn't treated me well, and help me get on this path, there is no way I would have been ready. I would have been open to meet my now husband. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's um, really impactful what you said. I mean, we, I think everybody, when you're facing something and there's a life challenge and there's that aha moment, 
that mm-hmm. light bulb moment where somebody says something or something happens or, you know, the, the universe is delivering that sign, you know, whatever <laughs> it is, right? I mean, yeah. it can make, it can, it can change your life. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm sure people who reach out to you too. And the fact that you listened. That's, that's the key, Kathy. You know, mm-hmm. it's that you have to be open to it. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily ready to act on it, but you've got to be open to it and really hear it. And up to that point, I was in denial, 100%. I wasn't ready to do it. And that was a lot of it. So I think part of our life journey is to better tune ourselves to, okay, I trust that voice. Mm-hmm. I trust that, that little inner voice that says, now do something, or this is wrong, mm-hmm. or there are better options. And going, okay, I hear you. I trust you. Now we're going to do something about it. Right. Right. Yes. Usually. <laughs> yes. Uh. <laughs> so in chapter five, which is titled uh. big girls don't cry. They melt down. Uh, been there, done that. I'm sure yeah. we all, I'm sure many of you listening can relate to that. Um, you write about acceptance. Sometimes you have to be broken, driven to your knees and have the path, path completely cleared before you can see the light. And, um, you know, I just would love for you to expand on that because I think, you know, so many people talk about the breakdown before the breakthrough, Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I think that's this quote from your book, you know, really spoke to me on that. So, you know what, thank you. You're the first person that I've talked to that has pulled that out. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, there's, we go through hard stuff in life. Life is not easy. Mm -hmm. There are challenges and it comes back to what we talked about easier is that every time you face it, you've got a choice. Sometimes, and I'm a big believer in this, you got to work through the ugly stuff (laughs) and you have to, you have to journey through grief. You don't just hop over it because it will come back to haunt us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in that moment, there were so many years of fears and doubts and, and, and tremendous self-doubt that I hadn't really allowed myself to acknowledge the long process. And sometimes it just comes and knocks you to your knees. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. again, you got it. You got it. Okay. Right now I've, I'm going to let this happen. And, um, you know, I will, I'm going to share a little bit bigger is that in the process of writing the book, I should tell you that the, this whole book took me 17 years because it's nonfiction. I had to live it before I could write about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the longest time, I didn't know what the ending was going to be. And I knew it couldn't be some clever thing. It needed to be authentic and genuine. I owe that to the book. I owed it to myself. I owed it to whoever was going to read it. And, and so it was this, this huge process. And in that process, there were moments of incredible self-doubt, if not shame of, oh, I'm never going to finish this. I'm a failure. I've started this big project. Everybody's expecting it. it was awful. And it's ugly. And I also think part of that is necessary because what happened is then I had to ask myself, okay, well, what are the options here? I can stay here rolled up in a ball on the floor or I can get up. Mm-hmm. I can run this thing to the shutter. And there were times when I really wanted to just run the whole thing to shutter. And I didn't, thank God. (laughs) Um, Or I can figure out how to finish this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, the meltdowns come big and small. And they're necessary, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. I, I couldn't agree with you more as painful as they are. Yeah. um, You know, if you're willing to take the lesson that goes along with that, into that next level of whatever it is. I I, I do believe in my humble opinion, I talk about this and my belief is in God. And I do believe that there is a journey and a path that we're on. And, um, and that if we are willing to take those lessons into Mm -hmm. what that next greater thing is, um, we can be stronger and better and as much as it sucks and as hard as it can be. hundred percent, hundred percent. And you know, the other thing that you bring up is, is this, this journey. And I do, I share some of your, your faith, but probably a little bit different, but same idea, but that I believe that there is a plan and the plan is for me to get here. How I get there is not pre-described, uh, pre-prescribed. It's, it's, I, you know, the easy way would go this way. I might do it this way, you know, and get there. <laughs> round and, and round and, and round we go, yeah. Yeah, and that this ultimate destination, I might have in my mind what I think that's gonna look like. I guarantee it looks better than what I'm imagining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what I have to trust. 
Right. And that's what I have faith in. Okay, yeah, it's ugly right now, but you know what? There's a reason for this and it's gonna help me get to this better place, whatever that may be. Right. You know, I think this is 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 timely too in talking about this and, and whether it's kids, whether it's a, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we've been through 18, almost two, 18 months, two yeah. years of, um, you know, nothing but craziness and, um, right? And uncertainty yeah. and ambiguity yeah. and grief you know, many feel that they've, they've lost a business. They've yeah. lost a family member. They, I mean, there is so much, there's loss of what we thought life was going to be like. Right. And I can see even, you know, with this idea of perseverance and acceptance and moving through, right. How that can even speak to what we've all gone through over the yeah. last collectively yep. gone through over the last couple of years. Yep. Yeah. So. What's, what's the line if, uh, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and he is laughing his ass off. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see how you handle this one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let me throw you that curveball. So as I mentioned, you do have, um, or maybe I didn't mention it yet, you do have a business. You are um, a content content writer and various things. You've been an entrepreneur, entrepreneur for a number of years, is my yes, understanding. Yes, I have. Correct? Yes, I have. Over, okay. over 21, 20, coming up on 22 is a full-time freelancer. Okay. And so how and why did you start that business? Oh boy. I was coming out of a job for which I was working on average 14 hours a day, Mm -hmm. often seven days a week uh, in a management position. And I worked myself into sickness, into illness. And the short answer is that a doctor said to me, uh, basically you change your entire life or the next time I see you, you'll be dead. (laughs) Okay. Well, there you have it. That's pretty much exactly what he said to me. And I, again, all right, I've got a choice here and clearly doing things as I've been doing them is not working. And I, as I was recovering from that illness and, and this is not in the book because at some point that's just a whole nother story. Um, What can I do? What, what can I do from home while I'm recovering? That'll give me the, not only the time to like go to all the doctor's appointments and, and also take care of myself, but also build a life that is balanced because mm-hmm. I wasn't eating right. I, mean, I was doing nothing right. I was just giving everything to this job and it was crazy. And I had always been proofreading, copy editing, writing things on the side. And so I just, I literally, this, this is so funny. I literally went through the yellow pages and I called publishers, mm-hmm. blind called publishers and said, do you ever hire freelancers? And, you know, do you have anybody going on vacation or maternity leave? And I could fill in and I went there. I still have clients from that initial phone call thing. And I started just mentioning to friends, friends from graphic designers, blah, blah, blah. And next thing I know, I have a business. <laughs> and it went from there. And it is it, pretty much all my business has been at this point is all referral. Mm-hmm. And um, I have been privileged to work with just incredible clients from major corporations to mom and pops. Uh, I've won awards that just kind of blow my mind. Um, Mostly writing. Right now it's a lot of copywriting for like website content and like ghostwrite blog posts for clients and things like that and feature articles. And every day I learn something new. I'm doing something different and it's really super gratifying and fun. And I feel so fortunate that I get to work at something that I really enjoy Mm -hmm. and apparently have some pretty good skills with. So, so important, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's, it's um, a small business owner and the people listening, right. It's, I mean, we choose into this, whatever it is and, and um, you know, the excitement that goes with that and the freedom goes with that and the hard work that goes with that. No kidding. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It's not all sunshine and roses guys, you don't just wake up tomorrow and you know, Somebody who's been an entrepreneur for, oh God, I think it's 26 years now, but um, is there a tip, you know, for, for our small business owners and entrepreneur women listening? Is there one particular tip that you might share with them as far as, you know, you know, I mean, I'm going to speak a little bit to, to people heading into, if you're thinking about doing a business, one thing I want to point out is that, that I am a writer. And there's this perception that I sit around eating bonbons and creating magical worlds and, you know, creating 80% of my day is running a business, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I do get to be creative and I'm very grateful for that, but most of it is, is marketing and, and build collecting. And, and, you know, I have a friend who calls himself the COE, the chair of everything, because we are, you know, and, and we do all that. And that's the reality of having your own business. So 
you know, people will say, oh, what's more stressful being in a corporate environment or being in, you know, in, in an office in your home, which I've done forever. And, and my answer is it's a different kind of stress mm -hmm. and you have to figure out what works for you. And I love that I have my own schedule and I have some flexibility, but I also work my tail off. Right. You know, and I'm not getting paid if a client is reviewing something. I'm not sitting around on my computer playing games. I have to be working because my my minutes are my dollars, you know. Right. Um, the other part of that is. Um, I think you, know, you asked you asked me when we were talking earlier, I don't think I think ahead of this of what is something that I have learned along the way in running a business. And that is that I have, through a lot of experience, learned how to better value the work that I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And an example I will give is that I not long ago got a call from someone who asked me to do a bid for a big job. And I did a lot of research and I put together you know, all the information. And he got back to me right away with, right away with such a low ball counter that it was, it was like getting a physical punch. Yeah. And it was just, and I thought, you know, 17 years ago, I might have negotiated, <laughs> you know, but I know that if they're nickel and diming me at this point, that they're probably going to be really challenging to work with. And I'm going to, you know, suddenly they're going to be asking for more work within that project and knowing me because I have a very high standard, I'm, I'm going to do extra in this call firm and it's going to be challenging. And the next thing you know, I'm going to be having to follow up with them trying to get paid. And I, and I just said, no, I said, no, thank you. I think you're looking for something different and that's not what I have to offer. And, and it was, it was hard to do. It feels icky because we want to help people and all that, but dang it, I'm worth more than that. And the work that I'm going to give them is worth more than that. And I stand by that. And I trust that a better project is going to come along and take that space that I had allocated. And that's one of the things that I, one of those lessons that I wish I had not just learned, but owned <laughs> early on. Right. You know, of, you know what, I'm, I, I don't, I work for myself. I don't have to work under these conditions. Here's how I work. Right. Yeah. Owning your value, really yeah. owning your value and believing in yourself and what you're mm -hmm. providing. And, yeah. and of course, charging for it and standing firm and being yes. able to so many women, you know, they want, especially when they're starting their business, you know, they're okay, well, I'll discount or okay. Uh -huh. Right. And they don't, they don't set those boundaries and those lines up on the front end. And then what happens yeah. is oh, we get walked all over. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, why am I doing this? And, you know, the resentment begins. So, um, yeah, yeah. That, if, if, if all of us could just embody that right at the very yeah. beginning. Right? Yes. And that's what I would encourage listeners to do. Yeah. Start sure. there. Start from a place of strength and own your value. Yeah. Okay. Let me circle back around to your publishing um, real okay. quick, because you've got a brand new workbook that's just come out. And, and I came across this, this um, I clicked on the blog link separately, and then we got talking about it called the 52 nudges, which I just adore. You know, it's like a bucket list on steroids, right? And um, can you explain to, a little bit to the listeners about what it is? And uh -huh. uh, yeah. Sure. Well, the genesis was several years ago, some law was passed and it was it was uh, I don't even remember what it was but the upshot was that it was basically going to make my business disappear something about gig gig laws I don't even remember what it was and I just went into oh my god there goes my life's work there goes everything I've ever worked for and I called my financial guy and Devin Saltz and they're like okay take a deep breath it's probably not as bad as you think let's just let's see what happens and everything worked out fine but in that moment, it was another one of those aha moments of like, okay, what am I, what is this really about? And I was at a point with my career where I was, I had been doing, you know, 90% business and maybe 10% creating and just fried and just so tired of the, the little fights and things. And I thought, all right, all right, maybe this is a message that I'm supposed to do something completely different. And I couldn't figure out what that could be. I just, I, you know, I got to the point where I'm like, I'm not even sure who I am anymore because I'm clearly not the same woman who started this business. I'm in a different place in my life. I live in a different city. You know, I mean, just so many things in my life had changed. And internally, I changed in ways that I hadn't even allowed myself to explore yet. Mm -hmm. And I thought, all right, again, how do I figure this out? And I started researching like 
you know, is there a, a weekend women's retreat and I can go and, and get all the answers to my question one weekend. And I couldn't really find anything there. And is there a workbook I could do? I couldn't find anything. And I thought, all right, I got to figure this out for myself. And it really came down to, um, at my core, I have always been the person who jumps without a net <laughs> that I trust. I mean, I have, I, in, before my own business, uh, in corporate settings, I, I, was known for leaving a job before I had another job lined up, which just, you know, our parents, my dad would just, I was amazing. He survived that period of my life, <laughs> but I so trusted that I would have the skills and that I could always land on my feet. And I hadn't utilized those natural skills in a long time. And I realized that that was so core to who I am. All right. How can I, how can I stretch those muscles again? Mm -hmm. How can I do that? And I thought, you know, what if I take a risk every week? And, and, and look at the different areas of my life that I want to expand upon. So creativity or work or spirituality was one of the categories. Um, uh, everything on my should list, right? And what if I just try these things out? And amazingly, and I honestly, God did not make this up. I, so I came up with a list of 60 or different things that I might do. And the idea was that I would pull one every week and I had to do that nudge, whatever it was. And the very first one I pulled was break a rule. <laughs> okay. And it's the idea part of the nudges too, is that it's broad enough that I then have to listen in the next, in the first couple of days and figure out, well, how might that present itself? Mm -hmm. What that might that mean? And, um, you know, I honestly haven't read that blog in a long time, that particular post, I can't remember what it was I did, but it wasn't like, you know, I didn't do anything illegal. I don't consider you much yeah. of a rule breaker from our no. from a childhood no. day. <laughs> but, but, think of, but think of the rules that we impose on ourselves. Oh, uh, absolutely. You, you have to have eggs and coffee for breakfast. Well, what if I have that for dinner? I, that's not a great example. Well, but you know what? There are things that we do. We, because we get set in these routines and we get comfortable in these, in these, routines. I can't think of a better word. And at some point you go, but is this still serving me? Is this serving me for who I am today and who I want to become? And right. that's the whole idea is to, to go through these exercises. And then at the end of the week, examine what came up for me mm -hmm. and go, okay, what did I learn? And what, did, what is my aha moment? That's what I call it, the aha moment. What did I, what did I see? What did I observe? What did I feel? And how might that inform what I do moving forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's it. And so, and again, you know, it's when I talked about the book is that I really wrote the book for myself. This whole nudges thing was just for me. And I started a blog because I figured, well, then people will hold me accountable. And the next thing I know, I have people doing it with me. And mm -hmm. that makes it so much more fun right. because I learn from my readers and they encourage me and support me. And I, I know there are people there that just follow it for the entertainment value because some of the stuff I really screw up and I applaud that. <laughs> and in the process, I mean, I've, I've, you know, discovered new interests and, and I've learned things that I never would have learned otherwise because I didn't have the time or whatever, all the excuses that we allow ourselves to make with our busy lives. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. So that's, that's the, that's the genesis. That's the process. And um, I've done two rounds. It's all up on the blog still um, with, with lots of success, a lot of fun things come out of it. And I sat myself down during COVID and I'm like, all right, am I done? Is this it? Uh, you know what? I think I've got at least one more round in me. And so this one will start up December 12th. Love it. Awesome. I'm working on my list right now. What do I want to, what do I want to explore? <laughs> okay. Let's find out. Right. I mean, I think that's so, I mean, yes, I can living is all about that, right? Absolutely. Out yeah. What speaks to your heart, what speaks to your soul, where, yeah. you know, what it is that you're wanting to do that you're saying no to, or think you shouldn't, or have to ask permission for, or, or any of those stupid, ridiculous reasons. Right. Yeah. And yep. instead, you know, I, I, I say, you know, I, I'm not going to end my life and be the end of my life and have any what have, could have, should have. Yeah. That's not what it's about. Yeah, exactly. Nudges is a great way to, um, to do that. So yeah. I'm sure there's people are listening like, man, I need to connect with her. Or I want to know more about this 52 nudges. <laughs> Where would be the best place for people to, um, to connect with you? Okay. Good. Uh, if you go to KathleenGuthrieWoods.com, that will pretty much get you in the right spot to connect to everything. That's the primary contact there is for the book. And then if you just Google 52 nudges, you should find the blog. And, um, but Kathleen Guthrie Woods is where you can connect to me directly if you can't find that. So those two 
options. Perfect. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So let me finish with my final question that I asked okay. everybody, all, all of my interviewees. What makes you a yes, I can woman? Oh man, that's deep. Uh, it's deep and yet it's also simple. I think there's a lot of things I would have to say at the bottom of everything is, is that I am not just open to reinvention, but that I embrace it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Embracing it, whatever the yeah. change might be. Yeah. I love that. Or even if we don't know what the change is, we're, we're open to embracing whatever possible, what else is possible? Yeah. What's coming? I don't know what's coming, but I'm going to embrace that open space. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, Kathleen, this has been so much fun. So much fun to read the book. I mean, you, you Thank guys you. love the book. And seriously, if it's not, you know, if it's not about kids and, you know, I've got three kids and they're all older, right? But there were so many pieces of this that really spoke to me on a different level, Thank right? You. So great. And then the 52 nudges, I encourage you all to jump in and, uh, and follow along with her or be doing the nudges. Um, be sure to connect with her. Kathleen, thank Thanks. you so much for your time. Thank you. We appreciate you being here with us. And to all of our listeners and viewers, thank you for joining us for this edition of Yes, I Can Living. If you have not yet subscribed to the magazine and the blog, be sure you hop on over to yesicanliving.com. You can get your daily yes, which is filled with inspiration and motivation, but you also have the daily uh, articles that are posting on the site all about health, wealth, life, love, and of course, business for the woman entrepreneur. So until our next episode of Yes, I Can Living, I hope you have a wonderful day and be sure to go out and live your Yes, I Can Life. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.